Hello and welcome back to Scandi Pictures. Scandi singers <laughs> talk singing. Um, Yay! We our... need a jingle, don't we? <laughs> you know what? I was ju- I was actually thinking about that earlier. Um, I need to just like put aside some time and I'll make one. And yeah, yeah. something Please something do. fun. <laughs> How I'm are you doing? I'm a sucker for a good jingle. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing, Therese? Yeah, I'm all right, thank you. Yeah. Um, been yeah, very hot at the moment. It's oh, quite. God quite warm for scandinavians um oh god tell right me now. about it it's uh, it's awful <laughs> i'm not i can imagine you boiling yeah i'm uh, i'm not very happy i've got uh <laughs> um i've oh. got my air conditioning out to put it that way i thought you might <laughs> yeah, absolutely no this oh, yeah. can do yeah right. definitely. so today we are going to be discussing the maybe a little controversial topic of are singers musicians? And, I mean, uh, some people might feel like, uh, yeah, obviously, uh, you know, myself kind of included. But um, but it is an interesting question because um, singers often have kind of a very different position from instrumentalists within music. Yeah. Is there something you would agree with? I would definitely agree with that. And I think, mm. like, it's, it's something that you just... I've certainly got used to sort of because I am really primarily a singer, a singer, mm-hmm. singer, a si- uh, a singer, a, a singer. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I mean, there's a piano in the background and a, and a guitar as well, actually, but they're mostly for show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I use I use the piano when I need to and to to do bits, but I'm definitely not a piano player and never really have been. Mm-hmm. Um, so my main instrument has always been singing. Yeah. Uh, and I know in myself that if someone asks me, um, oh, are you a musician? I always say, no, no, I'm just a singer, which is very strange because I also yeah. I'm definitely of the opinion that um, if you are if you're a person who makes music as your I mean, not even necessarily as your trade, but if you are a person who makes music in any way, in any which way, or shape or form, mm-hmm. you are a musician. I would guess the Oxford Dictionary says that a musician is defined as a person who plays a musical instrument, especially as a profession, or is musically talented. Okay, so, so that's then, quite broad, isn't it? It is, and I guess that then brings up the question: Is the voice does the voice qualify as an instrument in the same sense as, say, the piano or the guitar? Well, yes, <laughs> that's the thing, isn't it? And I, I'd say. It does like yeah. your voice is your instrument as a singer yeah uh, but that being said i think it's also um in the sort of view of um people who aren't necessarily musicians um mm-hmm. i think there's often a sort of um a little i i often notice that uh, people talk a little bit differently in terms of like what skill is required um to be a singer or to be a musician Mm -hmm. and i think um i think a a, a lot of people not not most people necessarily but a lot of people seem to be thinking that singing is just natural talent um Mm. and just something you can either do or can't do uh, and don't necessarily realize that actually (laughs) there's hours and hours and hours and years and years and years of training uh, that goes into um shaping your musical instrument as a singer whereas i think a lot of people who see someone uh play the guitar brilliantly or the trumpet or the harp or whatever mm-hmm. i think mo- most people realize that you don't just sit down and do that that some level of practice and training goes into it so maybe maybe the divide sometimes come from comes from the sort of external like non-music field view yeah i mean it's it's an interesting thing and of course you know looking at it from the inside out then we can you know as singers say that um there are a lot of skills involved which maybe aren't so obvious to someone who's in the audience mm. um and maybe that's something that you know the the common man uh will kind of see more if they see someone with a device in front of them if they see someone at the piano or they mm. see someone at you know their guitar then it feels more kind of natural to assume that oh yes that's uh, that's like a device that you have to learn to do 
Mm. Uh, whereas the voice is something everyone uses every day. And so to consider that an instrument, maybe, and again, this is speaking from the inside out. So of course, mm. I, I'll have the opinion that I have, but, you know, maybe it's easier to then think, oh, well, that's just the voice. I've got a voice, you know, yeah. there's nothing special about having a voice, but having a harp, now that's a, a special thing. Um, and be able to play it. <coughs> yeah, of course. Owning it <laughs> is very possible, even though. <laughs> I was trying to think about how, you know, what could have triggered this kind of divide between instrumentalists and singers. And, you know, because I will say, you know, an instrumentalist does use a device and a singer mm. uses a part of their body. So I would consider an instrumentalist to be separate from a singer. Mm. I would personally consider both to be musicians. But I was thinking when, you know, when would this idea of them being so separate have happened? Because, you know, both... An instrumentalist and a singer do perform music yeah and now unfortunately i couldn't remember quite where i read this and it, <laughs> it annoyed me because i i remember the statement that singers the position of singers within the f music and the arts changed quite a lot when operas became a thing mm. because i've read that too yeah i don't remember where <laughs> yeah um which does make sense i mean operas kind of they became a proper thing around you know the renaissance before yeah. that you know you would you know theater and music were separate entities you know mm. you know I, and I, it's hard to say to say such a sweeping general thing but in the west in the western classical art sphere they were considered separate things and suddenly with opera they were now together and mm. a significant difference between the musicians that were accompanying the singers and the singers were that the singers were on the stage visible doing acting maybe dancing essentially doing a combination of many things whereas the musicians kind of served more of a backing role and they were kind of sitting in the pit or like in front of the stage and they were kind of they were a bit almost separate mm. to the singers who were you know not only singing but also acting mm. and doing that kind of stuff and i and it did two things. First of all, it created that split where now musicians in the pit don't mm. sit kind of with the singers. But also, being a singer and being an opera singer could carry with it a certain element of like celebrity. Yeah, and I think actually that sort of divide, I mean, it's not like musicians in the pit or musicians in the background on a mm -hmm. stage. Uh, being the band to a solo artist like you know any sort of like sam smith or adele or people who perform as solo acts but obviously have a band and uh, for that matter excellent backing vocalists um so um there's that sort of thing of i suppose uh singer in some in some ways sometimes um, possibly as a result of, of opera and the opera sort of diva and opera prima donna, yeah. uh, which a little bit later was the sort of huge thing. And that was also a, I mean, that was a way for women to be performers without necessarily always being seen as prostitutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. you know, an actress was synonymous, uh, was basically synonymous with, um, with prostitute yeah yeah <laughs> uh, in many people's eyes uh so where i was getting with that long long-winded chat <laughs> was that um i think some somewhere along the line it's almost like singer has become synonymous with artist mm -hmm. um and artist is not necessarily always synonymous with musician um is that fair to say like i would say that you are kind of an artist because you are if you're involved in making the art happen you are but if you're not the main artist or if you're not the composer then maybe not always yeah and again it's this thing between what do common people <laughs> see <laughs> as an artist and what do, what is like the actual definition of an artist and of course that very neutral people with, in the real world <laughs> in the real world with real jobs <laughs> uh, you know what um you know very broadly speaking an artist is just someone who does art and it could be any art and it doesn't matter how you do it if you're mm -hmm. playing drums for the rolling stones you're still an artist 
even if yeah. you're a, you know considered like a session musicians uh, and a session yeah. musician um so it's it's this idea of what what is the kind of neutral definition objective definition of artist or musician versus mm-hmm. what people outside see it as um and i was thinking well as i mentioned you know in opera you would be tasked with not only you know performing really well with your instrument your voice mm. and you know trace you did some opera training and you know you know this is mm. a, a lifetime you know yeah. endeavor isn't it to be able to project your voice and also act and do all the necessary stuff to to, to be mm. a good opera singer that's not something yeah. that just about any old schmo could you know do in a week mm. and that's interesting as well because i f- i feel like very very few people would uh, would say that an opera singer's voice isn't an instrument um yeah and maybe it's it's tricky to say again um i think people maybe have a more understanding of how, the the time it takes to do that because a lot mm. of uh pop music is done more in a speech singing kind of way yeah. and maybe then people feel like oh well i mean that's easy i could do that uh, you know mm. Yeah. It's, it's... And the thing of projection as well, like mm. it is, no matter how you look at it, it, it is impressive when people can project over an orchestra and into a 2000 seat auditorium yeah. with just their bodies and their voices. Um, yeah. And maybe for even common people, they can say, oh, okay, so that is actually hard you have work. to stop <laughs> saying common people. I know. Like... I know. <laughs> It's. I don't know if we have a good expression for it in in Norwegian. We would call them lekfolk, and it's essentially people who aren't, you know, in the field. I don't ah, know. I don't know. Does, if that, does a... that like apply to any like people who aren't in the field that you're talking about in this well, particular I mean, moment, or of... people who aren't in any field at all? No, no. Like... So it's uh, it's often used about religion, <laughs> but yeah, essentially it's just like ah. people who aren't in that religion. And so I would have used that if, if we were having this discussion in Norwegian. That that's yeah. the term I would have used. I'm not sure exactly what the term is in English, but that's. No, fair. I'm a foreign. I mean, I'm a foreign in this, so you know I don't speak the English very good. <laughs> and I don't know why I'm laughing so much because we have the exact same term in swedish um yeah. but, but uh <laughs> but yeah no i know what, i know what you mean obviously uh, people not in the field of music not in the field yeah so now i've you've kind of you've 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 been a singer your whole life pretty much haven't you trace you know you start yeah. you you mentioned in the previous episode that you started singing before you talked according to your parents so, so says my mother yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. i kind of believe her yeah and I having then I got into singing much later, which means that I actually have, you know, I, I've experienced seeing singing from both sides because I started out as a piano player and then got into singing later. And then I yeah. do remember when I started out picking up singing, I definitely had the attitude that, oh, you know, this isn't something that requires huge skill. Da, da, da. Of course, I was terrible. I was an awful singer. And <laughs> I can tell from, you know, like listening back to those recordings and be like, wow, what, uh, what, what pitch am I even singing? What kind of sound is that? Like, I didn't have the perspective of someone who actually understands, you know, pitch and rhythm and all that stuff. I was just mm. a singing and I, you know, thought I sounded great. And in fact, I sounded terrible, you know, listening to it now. Um, and, you know, and I was also... A musician at the same time and i think maybe mm. maybe this is something if you if you haven't had a chance to make that transition to you know like like me start in a choir and suddenly realize that hang on i actually am one of the weaker people weaker people here i struggle to sing those high notes and the people around me are doing it without even breaking a sweat and also i'm putting the voice in all sorts of weird places i shouldn't to have to mm. go through that transition and then realize that actually I have to start taking lessons. I have to really work on this. Mm. Otherwise, then I'm just going to get left behind. Not everyone gets to do that. And a common, a a big issue I have with popular media is the way singing competitions are presented. Stuff like the X Factor, Mm. uh, Mm. you know, Idol, all those. Because they, they kind of thrive on creating the illusion of natural talent yeah they thrive on think on creating this this idea that anyone can apply anyone can be a superstar you just join and you're mm-hmm. fantastic and everyone will love you and uh, well of course 
what does happen is that people who have spent years and years and years, you know, really learning it are the ones that come through, mm. but they still somehow manage to pass it off. Like, you know, these people are so naturally gifted and, you know, yeah. this, this could be you if you audition. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, uh, that's an interesting thing that happens so much in the sort of popular media and also in the world of film. And it always like the sort of, I feel like there are so many, um, very strange perspectives presented on the artistic process and the creative process. Mm -hmm. uh, I read again, I can't remember where it was, but I'll try and dig out the link and maybe you can add it to the yeah, sure. video later. Because uh, I read a very interesting article. I think it was mostly in relation to um, to Shallow, no, not Shallow, to uh, God, what am um, I trying to say? A Star is Born. Uh, yeah, of course. Yeah, of course, born. Star is Born. <laughs> that was the song uh, but from it, the But Star it is, is born. about, <laughs> yes, and it, but it is about the creation of that song and about the sort of songwriting process mm -hmm. in general and how in so many films, I think it named other examples as well, uh, films and books and anything, but particularly in films, like we so often have this sort of like, um, this moment of genius where someone just sits down and writes a novel in a day or um, just creates the song with no additions or mm -hmm. um, amendments um, in in one moment and um, and then it's I mean it's it's sometimes it can happen like that of course it can uh, but most of the time uh, the sort of major works and the greatest works mm -hmm. are made with a lot of effort and it's not like you're no less an artist or a creative because you spend time a honing your craft and then working your craft when you're creating something hmm. but yeah i don't know well it's it's something i hear a lot from people uh is that uh, ooh, you know i really want to write a song but i'm never inspired and i never you know i never mm -hmm. have the inspiration and then I'm here, you know, and it's kind of my job. And I'm like, well, I, usually when I sit down and do my arrangements and my songwriting, I'm not inspired. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm just like, this is my job. I have to sit down and just make it happen somehow. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think with a lot of stuff in music and in the arts in general, people have been sold this illusion that you have to be divinely inspired. You have to have inspirations yeah. from above. And then that's how the, the art happens when the matter, of, you know, the actual fact is that it's, and I often just compare it to, I'm sitting at my computer, basically mm. using the musical version of Excel when I'm arranging, that's what I'm doing. And it's, it's not, <laughs> and it's not an unfair comparison because much like doing mathematic formulae in a spreadsheet, mm. I am using my knowledge of what has historically worked in music and how do I make that happen on the page and yeah. you know and basically solving the puzzle and again i think for a lot of people it's like oh he's playing a piano it's like a weird device i don't understand he's a musician was this person who's you know employing a lot of uh similar you know using a lot of similar skills but they're using their voice they were like oh that's just mm. the voice that's not that's not uh that's not a true musician that's just some yeah. old schmo that they found on the corner <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um and yeah, yeah actually i had a huge change in my impression of what singers are and do uh throughout my time in university because uh a lot of the people that were doing the singing in my course were not very good i will say this mm. many of them were extremely good but some of them were basically and i think it just was they were kind of doing it as like a year a year study that they just kind of did something fun and um right. but of course it was also like a higher education university level so i was a bit like well this is all that's required of you to be a professional singer and do university studies okay well clearly you know these singers mm -hmm. aren't real musicians um <laughs> i came in but of course there were loads of people that were actually super skilled and again i had this big big moment of re realization when i did my choral assignment and I was like, wow, these musicians, not only are these singers, but, you know, I think musicians, but also these singers have a lot of skills that I've not observed in singers before. I have not observed uh, singers that can sing together and sound like a unit because all of the singers I was used to had, you know, much more of a 
pop approach and they would you know in, in good and bad ways sound very much like individuals whereas here's like a bunch of musicians that are used to working together as a group and mm. creating uniform sound a lot of them read really well they listen they take direction they you know they work mm. in a very different way from the musicians that i'd worked with before and that really even opened up my brain but by observing that process i was like hang on there's a lot of skills here that uh, are required that i and this was my third year in university and i hadn't seen mm. this amount of like skills used yeah. in front of me you see what i mean yeah i see what you mean yeah <laughs> and yeah. then now years and years down the line you know you when, and we've both done this in fact we did this before just before the lockdown we came in and sang in a concert yeah. at the barbican with uh with um patrick, patrick watson. watson patrick watson yeah. uh famous canadian artist and we were called in we mm. you know we got a bit of music in advance we came in we did the rehearsal mm. there and it was very much like bang 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 and then on stage yeah. and then, and then yeah. he'd be like okay improvise and then yeah we, we had to be very musical about it and and th- yeah. think and use okay w- w- you know we had to use a lot of skills that maybe mm. aren't obvious and i'm not going to say the the word you didn't like again to the people in the audience <laughs> yeah no yeah definitely <laughs> uh or, or yeah or the, at least the people in the audience not in the field of music mm. if we're going to be particular but yeah but- it's um yeah you don't know what comes together and that's the sort of nature of a lot of um a lot of concerts that are um that are exciting to watch and fun to watch like part of it is um making it look easy in a way like yeah. <laughs> like uh, i think and uh i think something that i really loved about that concert as well was really like um it's not always that we are so involved in the show as um as a bunch of backing vocalists uh and it was really wonderful like they were such a lovely group of of musicians uh and so generous um on stage as well mm. both to the audience and to the people sharing the stage which i thought was amazing yeah um i i really quite like those kind of setups as well when music when the singers are in a choir setting and they're set up almost mm-hmm. like uh, a string section which we yeah. were we were like this yeah. is the prawn section alt section and it felt and i think we literally sang the string section parts yeah. in some songs and we did <laughs> and and it's uh it's really I've, I've been very fascinated by this way that the choirs and orchestras actually have a lot in common with mm. the way they're structured and i find it really quite yeah. nice uh when i'm in that setting where you're like you're the the choir but you you basically serve exactly the same purpose as the string orchestra would have done mm-hmm. and you're also uh you know you're you're in the back with the band you're not actually in the front separate from the band you see what i mean yeah yeah i see what you mean yeah it's uh yeah it's it's a very you're with the band <laughs> with the band yeah <laughs> I, but i i know that again prior to opera you know singers would stand kind of next to the instrumentalist mm. and that would be how they were positioned and it wasn't until mm. later that the musicians were the the singers were placed way in front of the of the of the band to be more prominent mm. um so yeah it's... <laughs> i suppose when action and when action and actual stage directions and and acting came into the picture <laughs> then you separate the stage action from the from the but then again we still have the sort of um I actually really love um, concert performances of operas uh, mm. for that reason, because you, um, you you get to see the musicians and you get to see the music in a different way compared mm. to when um, when the orchestra is just hidden away in in the pit. Yeah, but. and I don't know about you, but I find that especially like a lot of operas, they're just the, the action is so cliched that I kind of just want to forget about what's happening on stage. And I just want to listen to the music because that's what yeah. it's in, like the action is like, oh, the, she's in disguise and she's dressed as this person and this person's dressed as this person and they don't know who they are. Mm. And it's just like, come on. I realize she's in disguise is... or she's in distress. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I um, think it's, uh, you know, it's not a big stretch to 
acknowledged that being a singer does involve very different challenges from being an instrumentalist in some mm-hmm. ways because because singers very often are kind of the, the, the face of the musicians mm-hmm. and they are the person singing the words which again is what the audience is probably going to be able to relate most to because they might not mm-hmm. fully you know be able to read into what this line in the strings is or this line in the saxophones yeah. is but they will be able to understand baby i love you that's uh, something they understand yeah. <laughs> Um, so there is definitely uh, very different challenges uh, yeah. as a singer you have to also kind of be an actor a lot of the time yeah yeah I mean you're often expected to be the performer uh, obviously a bit different depending on if you're doing a very um, if you're doing a very serious choral performance you're not necessarily expected to do much beyond delivering the music the way the music is supposed to sound but a lot of the time singing with bands or especially if you're the um if you're the lead singer then there's a lot of um there's a lot required beyond just delivering the vocal stuff but the other thing mm. as well like particularly in relation to uh session singing and session singers like it's a particular skill uh, to have to um and that you really have to build on as well to be able to adapt your voice to so many different um different styles different um different sounds Mm. and obviously um obviously instrumentalists adapt as well depending on what music they're playing but you know that a violin is going to sound like a violin um and and whereas like with um with the voice voices can sound so different and the voice of one person can sound so different depending on what tools they use and um, yeah I'm, I'm clearly very excited about this because i'm knocking my microphone i'm nearly <laughs> pulling my headphones out and i'm pushing the table <laughs> this is this is what it everything is. is moving i mean we are uh, we are very passionate about this so of course we get like we get quite into it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but yeah no i mean yeah yeah. You've done some videos on that as well, like just uh, different uses of voice with singing. Yeah, and it is, you know, it's not unusual that you will get very interesting instructions as a singer, mm. you know. I mean, beyond, I mean, a lot of the time people will be like, we want this to sound very choral. We want this to sound very gospely. We want this to sound very poppy. And then you can get more flowery requests like, mm. sing it like you've lost your firstborn child or, you know. And Ennio Morricone vibrato. <laughs> yeah. One of my with vibrato, ever. without without vibrato, oh, it's um. Yeah. It, you yeah. have to you 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 do get a lot of really funny instructions as a singer, and then, you know, of course I've not I I've never played in an orchestra, so maybe they get all sorts of funny instructions too. I just don't see that happen. Um, mm. But I I somehow doubt it. I don't think they're looking at getting the same funny instructions as. Singers. depends on who's written the piece i guess <laughs> like some composers are just gonna have such imaginative instructions for how to deliver something and you know sure. it's uh and i love that and i i especially love when uh the assumption that people will interpret it in their own individual ways when <laughs> that's kind of in there um yeah. i think that's fun that's but, fun yeah. <laughs> well so what uh we've talked a little bit about you know what is a musician when did singers kind of become a bit separate from the rest of the of the musicians and maybe some potential Mm. reasons why singing isn't seen kind of at the same uh seen in the same way as other instruments but what um what is your opinion therese are you as a singer a musician Mm. well i mean don't put me on the spot. Well, I mean, it's yes, um, yes or no question. <laughs> or, I mean, yes. I don't know. Yes. 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 Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, and I, I, I agree with you, Trace. <laughs> I think. Thank you. <laughs> but it's also coming from the perspective of knowing all the, the skills required and just, you know, you know, it's uh, like with any device, mm. whether it be an organ or a zither or whatever it is, you know it it requires a lot of care and and work to get it to sound good and to get it to do what you want it to do so i yeah. i wouldn't consider it any less uh, of a musician thing than no. a pianist um 
No. And I think regardless <laughs> of like, I, I know a lot of people kind of associate musicianship with the the ability to, for example, read, read and write music. Mm -hmm. um, and I think certainly it's valuable skills and it makes the process of of learning things much quicker and much easier and actually much more exciting because you can see what other people are going to do. <laughs> um, but uh, but I think also because we haven't really mentioned it, uh, it has to be said that there are so many musicians who who don't read music and are yeah. incredible. Um, and course. also <laughs> musicians who read different notation systems to what we're used to as well. So. Hey, reading yeah. reading notation is an overrated skill in many assets of music. It's useful, but it's not always musical, in my opinion. Yeah. Anyway, I think we might call it there for today. Uh, if you have any, you know, strong opinions either for musicians, uh, for singers being musicians, or singers not being musicians, then leave us a comment and uh, be sure to tune in next week. Uh, we'll announce what we're going to talk about a few days in advance. Uh, yeah. And uh, thank you very much for watching. Thanks. Bye.